Hey peeps, this is Dario again from Skydive Ratings and today I want to explain to you how the ground and air evaluations work. Those are the integral part of the testing process during a rating course. I'll tell you how they're structured, what are the standards that we use to grade candidates and then I'll give you some tips to be extra successful at your next rating course. Evaluation sessions are all about fair, clear and measurable standards. And at Skydive Ratings, we believe that anything is a good excuse to learn. So we're gonna try to teach as much as we can even in these evaluation sessions. Now, let's talk about how the ground evil works. That's when you prepare a lesson, meet the student, find their starting point and then explain, demonstrate, have the student practice and then evaluate them on all of the teaching items on that lesson. You as the candidate will be the coach or instructor and either one of the evaluators or one of your fellow candidate is gonna be the standing student. The ground evil or ground prep as it's sometimes called starts when you meet the student and check their logbook and then it ends when you finish the whole lesson. Ground preps are pretty straightforward but I'm gonna give you some tips about them later. Now, air evaluation. These are the jumps when you actually have to demonstrate in-air teaching, flying skills and student supervision. They start at the 20 minute call and they finish after the debrief once the student has landed. In the air evals, the student is always going to be one of the course evaluator, never one of your fellow candidates. The evaluation, as I said, starts at the 20 minute call that's when you're gonna go through a pre-flight check of the gear. After that, the student is gonna put the gear on and you're going to go through the first of the three required gear checks. Now, in order to test your gear awareness, we are going to put some misrig on our gear, like uh, misrouted RSL, incorrectly routed chest strap, loose handles, and etc. However, Neither us as the evaluator or you as a candidate are going to board the airplane with incorrect gear. We are both going to board the airplane with perfect gear. Once you get in the airplane on the right up, just like you would with an actual real student, you're going to review the key altitudes, you're going to review hand signal, dive flow and stuff like that. Now, during the exit and freefall, we're going to present you with some problems and we expect to see the correct response, whether that be hand signals, flying your slot, or keeping us altitude aware. Again, all of this is measurable and clear. We are not going to fly aimlessly through the sky. We're going to present to you with a very defined and specific problem, and we expect to see a very defined and specific response. Once we both open our parachute, we're going to pause the evaluation so we can both focus on our canopy plan and landing and only once both of your feet are back on the ground you're gonna do some canopy observation if possible and then after that you're gonna take us through your debrief. Now, what are the standards that we use? For both the air and the grounds we use the evaluation sheets and those are publicly available on the USPA website under IRM evaluation forms and you can also look at the scoring criteria example, which are in the actual IRM at the end of each rating section. You can go ahead and look them over to know what the standards and the grading criteria are. Regardless of the rating or if it's a ground or air evaluation, you need a total score of 75 or higher to pass. Unless you would unfortunately incur in an automatic concept, but we're gonna talk about those at the course. Now for some extra tips. During the ground evaluation sessions, make sure that you have a readily available outline or lesson plan that you can reference. These ground preps are not at all about memorizing the material, but rather the method and the delivery. You will never get a lesser grade if you look at your outline or your lesson plan through the eval. If anything, that can only improve your performance. And also, just know that the hardest thing about the ground preps is the awkwardness of teaching and the awkwardness of teaching someone that already knows. So do your best to imagine that you're talking to a real student. Ask them questions, find their starting point and imagine that you're actually going to take them on a skydive. 
For the air evaluation, it's all about remaining calm. Respond to what you see and fly your ass off. We see the best performance when candidates are in the zone. They're simply responding to what they see instead of being anxious and amped out about, oh my God, they're gonna screw me in free fall or I'm gonna have to chase them through the sky. Embrace the challenge and enjoy the journey. You'll be surprised how rewarding those jumps can be. So hopefully you now know more about the evaluation process and hopefully I'll get to jump with you soon. Take care.